Sunday. I'm guessing they're going to come earlier, probably before it gets so dark. We had a great time at Trunk or Treat uh, yesterday over, there's so many people to thank for that, the children's team, yay! It was a great, great time. And we're here today to praise God into the fullness of all that we have to offer in praise. And so I invite you to prepare yourselves to enter into a time of praise, of solitude with prayer and a time of opening yourself up to the place that God may be calling you to today. Let us get our praise on. <laughs> This tower can be a fortress. This tower can be a tower that 
lifts us up, this tower can be definitely a tower of community, of building together. So uh, this morning, we have two more words. The first one is temporary. We're going to remove temporary. And then Diane is going to add a new word for us. And that word is, I'm sorry. Eternal. Eternal, thank you. All of a sudden my mind went blank. I kept thinking permanent instead of eternal, and I knew that was wrong. So now we have eternal, a good word for God. So And so I invite you to share with me in the words as we are called into worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing to God all my life. Happy are those who trust in God. God the Lord is King forever. And that is what we do on this day. So today, uh, I'm going to do a song for you that I have never done in this church. Uh, there's a song that I've known for probably 50 of my 62 years, when my grandmother uh, not, not taught me, but played and, and uh, sang with my uncles and things like that. But And I thought about it many times over the years because I, I repeat songs, you know, um, that I like. And I've always loved this song, but I've never done it. So I have the words with me, so I, <laughs> I do these those. It's called The Love of God. It's an old, old song. just for you on this day. 
Let us praise you, O Lord, with all of our souls, for as long as we live, let us sing praises to you while we have breath. Our world is ruled by mortal men and women in whom we must not put our trust. For too often their plans, like their lives, are short-lived and often perish with them. Ultimately, our trust must be in you, our Lord and God, and in the people you inspire to bring your kingdom to life. Like all of the men and women who fight for justice for the oppressed, who feed the hungry, who free the prisoners, and help them after their release to find a better way to live. Like all the women and men who teach us about you and the universe we inhabit, who help us to see where we can help to create your kingdom. Like all of the men and women who lift up those who are bowed down, who welcome the stranger, who uphold the orphan and the widow, and who help the wicked see the error of their ways. And so on this day and in this time, into the silence, we pray for all that are affected by COVID-19. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the ministries and the compassion that we offer to the stranger. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the deepest concern that is on our hearts this day. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for families enjoying Halloween today. May each door be a blessing. We pray for hope and healing for Philip, Brian, Terry, Teddy, Betty, Clifton, Joel, Mariah, Will, Nancy, Todd, Doris, Rich, and Darren. O eternal God of heaven, may earth sing your praises forever. May humanity praise your holy name and continue to co-create with you until your kingdom is here and now. Amen. And now will the children come forward for their time. Okay, so I wanted to say a couple things before we get started. First, thank you everybody who helped with um, Trunk or Treat. Thank you for grilling 100 hot dogs. That went super fast. That was amazing. Um, everybody that participated, um, I will say probably my favorite part was Logan and Christine built a Jacob Tower that was bigger than Logan. It was incredible. So I'm going to have pictures of that. I'll send those to you, Katie, because it's something you have to see. It was amazing. It was so fun to watch. Um, again, thank you, everybody. And the kids made something for Pastor Joe because it is Pastor Appreciation Month. So I want to thank you for everything you do for us. Who wants to go take this to Pastor Joe? Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you. It took everything to keep them from eating the candy and put them in the boxes on it. I'll share with you later, okay? <laughs> thank you. Thanks. So, Trunk or Treat was amazing. So, thank you, everybody, who donated candy and came out. It was a great turnout. We had so much fun. So, we have kind of a special little um, activity today with the kids. Um, I'm going to talk about um, Psalms 146 before we get started. So, what's a special day that you guys like to celebrate? Go ahead. My birthday. Your birthday? What about today? What do you guys stress? I'm not 
That's right, you get a free donut today if you have a Halloween costume on it. So what can you do when you celebrate on any day, your birthday, on Christmas, on Halloween, on Thanksgiving, what can you do? True. What else can you do? What can you do to celebrate? Who can you celebrate on any of those holidays? You can celebrate God. That's right. Absolutely. Can you celebrate them on a Tuesday? <laughs> yes, you can celebrate any time you want. And that's what we're going to do today, right? Even on Mondays. Even on Fridays. Okay. So does everybody have their plate? We made one for Teddy. Do you want to Isaac, there's a plate. Okay, guys, do you want to stand up? You remember the song that we just practiced? They did so good that we had to share it with you. You guys want to all stand up? <laughs> All right. Show this side. Show the side of your of your candle. You ready? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. This is so that everyone can see the full majesty of these costumes. Oh, I forgot to add. So today we're taking the kids, if you want to, car parade to Central Plaza. We have bags for the shut-ins. So parents, if you want to meet in the gathering place, we're going to just read a book out there right before church is over. And then if you do want to follow to go to Central Plaza, that's great. If not, that's okay too. We can only stand outside because of COVID. But they're going to put us on the screens so that all the residents can see our costumes. is that right hey lizzie before you take teddy out would you explain to people your halloween costume with teddy and what he was last night They don't know how to do Halloween very well. <laughs> so if you see signs of Teddy in an electric uh, fence type uh, barricaded thing, it was all in good fun, right? We, we can all agree with that. 
and he had a good time, right? It was all good. It was all fun. It was all great. So thank you, Clues X, for probably winning how we use that one. That was great. So I, I bring to you the uh, song, the 146th Psalm. So songs are often uh, considered poems. They're often considered songs. They're often considered laments. Uh, it just depends on, on uh, where we are reading from. And this is, is all about doxology, this short thanksgiving to God, this praise, this moment where we stand there. And so I give you these words. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God for all my long life. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Our God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. So we've already kind of gotten started on a theme of some music. And you all know that I get a little cringy when I start talking about singing because that's not my gift. That's the other Joe, Joe with the E's gift, not my gift. But I have a uh, kind of a pop quiz for you. So I need to see if you can fill in the rest of this. It's, it's really just a, it's not even a stanza, it's just like a phrase, but it's a singing phrase, okay? So let me get to my list now. It's time to rise and shine. Glory, glory, glory. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Good. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when stars are gray. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Gosh darn you guys are so good. Yay! Yay! What a way to praise God on this day. And we may have revisited some songs from camp, and we may have revisited some songs from our children's time when we were in the classroom in the little short chairs, right? That understanding that we teach children very early about how important it is to praise God. And then sometimes we forget in our own stuff that we have going on. Now what really had, had touched me in this scripture reading was where God watches over the stranger. So depending on where you kind of read this, it, it could be the sojourner, it could be the alien, but the NRSV had it as the stranger. Now last night, over across the street in the other parking lot, there were lots of strangers, right? People we didn't know, maybe people that we didn't recognize, maybe costumes that made no sense, and that would be mine. But there will be a day when you will all get to see this costume, <laughs> she says with a laugh. Yeah. It didn't go over so good. There's a biblical interpretation with it, but someday you will all get to see this costume. So here we go with this idea about the stranger. Now, there was a child that walked by that was definitely in costume, and I had no idea who this child was. I mean, not like physically knowing, but who the costume was. And that Shelly Oldham, she just knew right away. Who was it? Uh, it was like DJ Marshmallow or something. DJ Marshmallow. You're all like there, right? You all get who DJ Marshmallow is? 
Uh, Shelly Oldham, she's one of the cool kids, I tell you. And so we got to meet so many families, so many kids. We had an incredible turnout. I don't know if number-wise we quite have a, a figure for that, but I would guess easily over 100 that were here and were part of that event. It was amazing. It was fun. It was a lot of work for a lot of people. So thank you for your giftedness in providing the treats, in providing the staffing for it, in providing the place for it. All of those, all of those children that had a brush with us in a positive way as we met the Lord. Now, this week also, we had another kind of stranger experience with, you know, our lot's been closed here, and so we have not been able to have people come up to the ramp door when they need help. So we've been using the door straight out here to the parking lot, uh, but it doesn't have a, a call button for people to call to be let in and all of that, so we've just needed to leave it open this week. So one day, Katie had to leave a little bit early. G had to leave a little bit early, and it must have been Wednesday now that I think about it. It was raining, it was really cold and kind of dreary that day, and I come out from uh, the education wing to come down into the gathering place, and I can see someone is sitting on the bench right inside the door. I'm a little taken back. It was like, you know, I, I thought I was alone. I wasn't alone. And as I'm getting closer, I can't tell if this person is a male or female. They're, they're hunched all the way over, kind of rocking back and forth, and I knock on the door before I go in because I didn't want to shock whoever was there. And I just said, hey, how are you? And a gentleman, he lifted up his head, and he said, I'm sorry, I hope I didn't scare you. And I said, well, I was hoping the same thing as I came to you, that I wouldn't scare you. And here is a gentleman that, gosh darn it, he's had a, a rough existence. He just drove into town with some friends, and there was an argument in the car, and he was pushed out. And our door was open, and he came in out of the way. Now, there's a whole lot of things about this story that I could go many different directions with. But I want to talk about the providence of God, that our door was open for him to come in out of the cold and the rain. What a gift that was for all of us, because this is certainly not my church, this is our church, to provide a place of refuge from that weather that was coming in. Because we are a people that have connections and we know how our community works, I called our homeless outreach team through the police department. And I gave them the short synopsis. And they said, here's the deal. We are willing to help this gentleman get back to his home community, but we just can't do it today. He's going to need to spend the night here in Wichita until we can get to him. And if you take him to the rescue mission, they will keep him safe. They will make the connection with us in the morning and the next piece is fine. And so that's what I did. I, I drove this gentleman up there to the rescue mission. We have opportunities to reach out to people on the day we didn't expect it. I had no plans of helping the stranger on Wednesday. And in fact, I'll have to be honest, when I first saw him, it was like, oh no, I'm the only one in the building. How do I handle this? So because that was part of my fear, God even answered that with right then, Stephanie shows up to do some accounting work for us. So there are now two of us in the building, which feels like a safer kind of situation. And then I could let her know I was going and what to do if I didn't come back. 
reality, right? What does it mean if in our praises we're willing to lift up to God even a situation of helping someone that was so broken? Literally, he had, he had some physical ailments. I'm guessing he's younger than I am. But he obviously was struggling physically. Because of the other things that were going on, I think he was probably struggling mentally also. I think there were some issues with voices and responding to those things. And that's part of what happens. That's part of what happens when somebody gets deemed the stranger around us. The one that's not just like each one of us. The one that maybe doesn't get enclosed in a circle of care and compassion because they just do weird things. And yet, God calls to us. You know, we spent those last few weeks with Job, and where Job had those terrible things happen to him, and then finally he kind of hollered at God, and God kind of did an equivalent of, let me remind you that I am God and you are not. And goodness, goodness prevails in Job's faithfulness. And so where is our faithfulness in praising, in giving to God something that is just so precious, which is ourselves? What would happen if your challenge this week was to wake up and the first thing out of your mouth is a praise? It could be a thanks for this new morning. It could be, I hear the birds. It could be, the kids are up and I need to get going. It could be a lot of things, but what if it was a phrase instead of a, uh, 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 right? Which we can often get to, we get stuck in that kind of place. What if during the day, you simply offer thanks to God. Thank you. Thank you for that sunset. Thank you for the fire department that is responding. Thank you for the students across the way that are the next generations of leaders that we need and we pray for. What if this week in seeking the stranger, you engaged in a meaningful conversation outside of your generation, older or younger, and learn something new. Because I'm going to have to go figure out who DJ Marshmallow Head, just Marshmallow, DJ somebody is with a big white with neck. I have things to learn, and I have younger people willing to teach me. I have older people that have wisdom that I, I need to enjoy while I can. What if this week, as part of your praise to God, you acknowledge those people that have been a part of your life in the good times and in the bad? Bob, I can't help but think of our, our celebration of Shirley yesterday at Great Plains Nature Center, where there is a bench. And if you want directions, we will make sure to give them to you so you too can go sit on Shirley's bench. And the stories that were told, oh my goodness, the tears that flowed. That's love. That's how we love each other. That's how we praise God, in the fullness of relationship. All of Psalm 146 is pointing us to, now remember this is still the Hebrew text, but it's pointing us to a vision of what we will find in Jesus Christ later. It's coming. And as Christians, that is how we understand learning about the faiths we have come from, that we have grown with, and then we became part of. 
of something new in Jesus. That God continues to create a new thing around us all the time if we are willing to be a part of it. And so I want you to think about this newness that's happening. You know that we were doing vaccine, I mean, uh, testing for COVID here at the church. That's an ongoing thing called the church. If I'm here, I'm certainly willing to, to do a test. That's in a partnership with KDHG. We're working on a new project, which will hopefully be within a couple of weeks, where we will be able to uh, offer a vaccine clinic for anyone that would want to come. That the children will be able to get their first dose and adults can get boosters or finish their, their uh, regimen of, of uh, vaccine. Because we believe that this is part of this goodness that is being revealed to us in hopes of being in full community again. There's ways you can help. I know that, that Bruce needs help with the parking lot, with the games that will be starting uh, tomorrow, right? This is already Sunday, Monday, game starting. That you can be a part of what it means for us to be witnesses in community as we find a way to help the church in the labor that we provide in the parking lot for parking. Talk to Bruce about it. He has a plan and he has a good plan for all of us. We have opportunities to serve. I think that you can find ways of offering yourselves beyond your financial gifts, beyond the close circle into the bigger circle of called kingdom here among us right now in this time if we're willing to listen to God, if we're willing to praise God, if we're willing to put ourselves out there. May it happen, may it be so. May we each find our place in giving to the kingdom here and now. You are invited to make your offerings again as you leave. Uh, and if you brought your uh, ministry interest sheets back with you, uh, please leave those too or type your emails. We are at an exciting, exciting time here at university. I can't wait to see how God's going to use us. All of us.
Well, Liz, do you want to say anything about what might happen in the advent of the bells? That is such a segue into right. Sorry, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing. Well, what you hear recorded on our little phone and then put into the church system really isn't how bells are supposed to sound. And we had so much fun with our concert when we did the Bells on Broadway that we hope to do an in-person Christmas concert the first Saturday in December over in the gym at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So when you flip your calendar over, try and put that on because we'll continue to do this, but you don't get the real feel of how bells should sound. And we haven't played in church because it's pretty hard to spread out the way we have to spread out now in this small space. But we look forward to doing that again. Yay. And thank you. Thank you. Are we blessed or what to have this kind of praise that comes up through music over and over again? And with our, our music that is represented here on our altar stage today. And so I invite you to share with me in a prayer of dedication. Whatever we have in this life is a gift from you, God, and we are truly grateful for it all. Receive all that we offer to you this day, both money and also our very selves. May we serve you faithfully always. Use our gifts to build your kingdom. We who bear your image are called to reveal your love to all people and to all creation. Use us where you will. May we always be willing to serve. Amen. And we are going to sing together over a thousand times to sing. If you are using your hymnal, it's number 57 and it's verses 1, 2, 5, and 7. <laughs> some semblance of normalcy. Uh, Wednesday, we will start choir rehearsal again, and uh, that'll be at 7.30 right here in the chancel. We'll uh, sing mask for now. Um, we'll be uh, doing anthems back in the church starting next week, so, rah. Oh, you know, it's, it's been a long time since anything has felt normal. So these little steps feel good. We also are aware that we're watching, watching, watching what's happening. 
So being aware that, that what we hope to have happen and what might be able to happen in a big view might, might have some uh, steps backwards too. So I would like to leave you with these words uh, before we do the actual sending. And so as always, Bishop Stephen uh, Charleston that I, I quote so often, he says this, I wish you could see my prayers. I wish they were like small specks of light that would surround you so you would know I am praying for you. That would lift your spirits. But since that is not possible, I will settle for the next best thing, the indirect evidence. If you feel a little extra energy, if you feel a sense of confidence, if you just feel like smiling, then my prayers are working for you, mine and many others. I will let it go at that, but if you ever see a lot of little lights around you, please let me know. Oh, isn't that a praise in and of itself? And so I invite you to share with me in the words of Sydney as we go out from this place. Go in the strength of God, who champions the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, who releases the captive, who cares for the orphan, the widow, the stranger, who lifts up the downcast, who sustains all their things. We go in hope, go in peace, go in rejoicing and trusting in God, who calls us by name and whose blessing is ours forever. Go with light, go with love, go into the world to serve all you. Thank you.